Can I say something to you? Listen, you was really, really something back there. Incredible. Are you talking to... Me? Hello everyone, Skippy here, and welcome to One Piece episode 962, directed by Yasunori Koyama and supervised by Masahiro Shimanuki. As the last real setup episode for this flashback before it kicks into high gear, it makes clear sense why Yasunori Koyama, one of the strongest regular episode directors, is tackling Whitebeard's introduction into it, with his knack for colors and the skill to create proper atmosphere through compositing and lighting already coming out massively in the preview, and teasing just what this episode at large will have to offer through little bits of cinematic sneak peeks. With signs of both Yoichi Mitsui and Masahiro Kitazaki helping out a bit by animating the off-screen fight between Odin and Doji, along with Masahiro Shimizu, Manuki's corrections not looking massively offensive again so far despite my indifference to his style, will for sure be in for yet another amazing treat from the team that brought us 950, which will hopefully be just as legendary as the content that it's covering. So will episode 962 be yet another winner that will kick off the most exciting sections of this flashback? Let's get ready to clash and find out. This episode covers the remaining six pages of chapter 962 while also slightly redoing Odin entering Kurdi from last week, and the first 13 pages of chapter 963. And outside of the brief obvious filler like Inu, Naku, and Kawamatsu being actually knocked out, and Odin versus Doji that pads for time quite well and never feels like it's overstaying its welcome, this episode is fairly accurate to the manga, but there's really just something that Koyama brings to it that makes it feel alive in every little crevice. Whether it be the sentimental and emotional scenes or the just straight up comedic ones, Koyama makes them so much more punchy than they were in the manga through effortless voice direction, music and sound effects placement, and just a keen eye for how to time it all. Mostly being seen in the scene with Inu and Neku at Zo, where instead of them talking to each other as they're sailing, it hard cuts right to them on the beach and therefore feels quite a bit funnier as a result since they don't drag on the scene. Granted, of course you'd be feeling this way anyways when a page is brought to the screen regardless because it's in a completely different medium this time. Time. But I feel like there's just a real sense of being that Koyama makes sure it exudes that goes simply hand in hand with how he handled the content in 950 and made that even better than the source as well. When even the scabbards training to properly become Odin Samurai is given a whole entire tracking lawn shot instead of just some stills, you can clearly once again see just how skilled Koyama is as a director which makes me break out happily into dance like he made the citizens of Wano do. Of course Koyama's fantastic adaptation wouldn't be half of what it is if his board was anything less than stellar, and I'm just super happy to report that he didn't disappoint. With numerous gorgeous shots scattered all around that are either packed with wonderful lighting or expert usage of color that, like stated in the adaptation, make it still a source material isn't just a mere husk, Koyama absolutely chews up the scenery and then someone crafting this board, and makes it an absurdly good follow-up to his previous one. Getting even ambitious at points with the rotation of Odin and Doji men at the start in the background animation as the scabbards inch towards Kurti, and when we get a lower key but still incredibly effective example of symbolism, as the sun shines on Doji and his cronies after Odin says that they need a leader which signifies them coming out of their dark bandit-like lives, it just makes me love it all 100 times more. I'm completely in shock that Koyama has managed to bring us such a fantastic storyboard that easily challenges his work on 950 so soon after it. And sure, Masahiro Shimanuki may not be the most ideal supervisor for it, and his jank and stiffness this time around is a lot more noticeable than it has been. But it doesn't really ruin the episode for me at all, especially when we get the absolutely sick scene from Masahiro Kitazaki that depicts the scabbards duking it out between one another that is just as smooth and ambitious as Koyama's creative guidelines for it. While I definitely wish it could have covered just a tad bit more pages so we could get the full-on clash between Odin and Whitebeard here, I still absolutely adored 900 in every conceivable way, not just because of how well directed it was, which thankfully keeps this Odin flashback ball rolling, but also because of how it made content that 
that was already great even better which it did so ceremoniously and almost effortlessly. And when next week's episode 963 is looking just as good if not a bit better, oh boy am I freaking excited. If you don't particularly check the credits of the opening often then you'll miss the fact that co-series director Aya Komaki has been supposedly replaced in her role by next week's director Satoshi Ito. And while I'm not sure what that means for Komaki's role in the series or at Toei in the future which may make for a video on its own, that means that next week's episode is yet another series director one and one from a newly minted one at that. And when visually it looks just about as stellar and atmospheric as we come to see from Ito, plus what looks to be Chu Young Su's snappy and absolutely insane work for Odin vs Whitebeard, we'll definitely be in for something special I can guarantee. When even Supervisor Shigefume Shingaki's corrections here are hella polished, and don't feel anywhere near the type of groggy art that we've seen from him since post time skip, 963 should definitely end up being worthy of holding the start of Odin and Whitebeard's adventures. Anyways guys, that's it for now, I'm Skippy, and where's the pre-order link for the baby Kawamatsu plush?